Good evening everyone and welcome back to another episode of our WWE 2K24 Universe Mode. This is our last episode of Retro before our Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And we've got three more big matches to lead up to that pay-per-view. Starting things off then, we have got a mixed gender tag team match. We have got the Snookers, Jimmy and Tamina, going up against Triple H and China. Of course, that leads on from the battle that uh, Tamina, China and Bulnakana have been having so far this month. Next up, we are going to have... I can't find the right button. Where is it? There it is. Uh, Nikolai Volkov going up against Vader. So far, Nikolai Volkov is very high in the rankings as a former European champion. Uh, Vader is very low in the rankings, so maybe this match can help both of them out. Well, help me out anyway. And then our main event of the evening. The Blade Runners were unhappy at the fact that the Brothers of Destruction had the advantage with Paul Bearer. So the Blade Runners have delved into their past and they've grabbed a hold of a good friend and their very first manager, Dirty Dutch Mantel. And he is going to be making his in-ring debut here in SWE today. Oh, and up against the Devil's favourite, Demon Kane. So without further ado, let's get straight to the opening match. And here is the opening match of the evening. Jimmy Snooker and Tamina Snooker up against Triple H and China. China. China number one. Now we are going to have a triple threat match at our Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Tamina Snooker, Paul Nakano and China in that match. It's going to be a great chance for one of those three ladies to get a nice chunk of points. But building up to that, we've got another opportunity here for them to get some points as well as... I think both of these teams have never... Triple H and China, no, have not wrestled in the intergender tag division. Uh, neither has Jimmy, Snooker, and Tamina. So let's get those added in as well. But maybe we haven't had a huge amount of intergender tag matches. It looks like maybe... Four? No, six. No, three. We've had three. There we go. So far, we've had three. Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley have won one. Adam Cole and Britt Baker have won one. And The Miz and Maurice have won one. Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti have lost. Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch have lost. And Andrade and Charlotte have lost. There's probably actually more, to be honest, but I'm lost. Too. So, great opportunity. And it's not very often we see Jimmy Snooker either, so... Jimmy Snooker's had three matches so far in our history. Uh, currently sat on a minus one. And I think from Triple H, we saw him on Raw, didn't we, as well. Uh, he ended up getting a point there. He is currently on a plus four as well. So, good chance of both of those two to do well. Tamina currently sits in 299th position in the female rankings on a minus two. And China currently sits in 22nd on a plus three. So... It's a big match all round. No one's in necessarily a very good position, so uh, everyone does need the points. As now Triple H and Jimmy Snooker are the legal man. Big diving back elbow by Snooker. How heavy was Snooker? Something that I thought about before, and I can't remember. Would Snooker have been classed as a cruiserweight? 5 foot 10, his build weight was 235, so probably not. He was just a big man. I did not know that. Really? Okay, I'm a, I might look stupid here because people might know this and I didn't. Deuce and Domino, the tag team, from many years ago. Deuce was Jimmy Snooker's son, so Tamina Snooker's sister. No, brother even. Wow, okay. And of course, he is part of the Anawai family as well. Take the tag. Um, whereabouts is he sitting there? Well, say he's part of the Anawai family, but I don't know the whereabouts he is in the family. Okay, he's part of the family by marriage. Married in to Sharon Lee. Okay, it's not part of the this part. Okay. So I'm staring at the. Um, 
I'm just staring at the uh, the Anaway family tree trying to figure out my brain. So the Merger. This family just confusing the life of the end, Right, Triple H and Jimmy Snooker in the ring, and it's Triple H who is in control at this point. Triple H, big strike. And working over the hand of Jimmy Snooker now. So, yeah, Jimmy's not classed as anyone we can use as a, uh, a high flyer. Well, he's a high flyer, obviously, but he's not someone we're ever going to use as a cruiserweight. No, but these two ladies as well as China and Tamina, two big powerhouses of the women's division. Nice boot in the arm. China brings Tamina back up in with a DDT. I've not got the entire card written yet for the Elimination Chamber. I think I'm going to do a couple of other... I might do a, a men's and a women's chamber just for ranking points. Just pick some people and desperately the ranking points and give them the opportunity to, to gain them. Of course, the triple threat between Bulnacano, Tamina and China is already in. Obviously, the Brothers of Destruction versus the Blade Runners as well are going to be a big match at the pay-per-view. Referees up to a five count. It's China now with a big swing on Tamina. Tamina hit the barricade. And China, thank you China, China bring Tamina back into the ring. No count outs here. China now looking to drag Tamina towards the corner. Tamina fighting back. China now big back elbow taking down Tamina and comes across to make that tag back into Triple H. And Snooker now with a double-handed choke slam, taking down Triple H. And Snooker, I think he was going for the knee there, but Triple H was able to avoid it. And now dropping Snooker face first across the top turn. But there's the pin for the one, two, and only a two count. Big double axe handle into the spine. And Triple H now ducks in the lead. Where is um, Tamina gone? Big spine buster by Triple H. There's the pin. Tamina's nowhere to be seen. This could be enough for Triple H from China to get the win. No, it's only a two count. Triple H now does make the tag into China. Tamina also enters the ring. China with a boot in the gut. And Tamina was taunting and gets caught straight away with a pedigree. And the intergender tag rules means that Snooker was not able to break up the pin without breaking the rules himself. And there we go. China and Triple H pick up the win. China moves up to a plus four. I can't imagine Stephanie being very happy with these scenes. Tamina moves down to a minus three. In the intergender tag ranks, Jimmy Snooker and Tamina move down to a minus one. Triple H and China move up to a plus one. Let's resort those rankings. Resort those rankings. Triple H in the tag division picks up another point this week. That puts him up to a plus five. And Jimmy Superfly Snooker is going to be moving down to a minus two. Right, let's move on. And here is that second match of the evening then. We are going to have Big Van Vader going up against Nikolai Volkov. So at the moment, Nikolai Volkov sits very high up in the rankings, I believe. Volkov, yeah. 23rd in the rankings on plus 11, mainly because, of course, he won at the European Championship and had a great run with that. Whereas Vader currently sits on minus 4 in 947th position somewhere obviously he believes he should be a lot higher than big knee in the face there by Vader 
And dropping the leg, dropping to the back of the arm as well. And Vade at the moment looking very dominant. Volkov gives him a boot in the face. And Vade a big splash into the corner. And Vader is looking very dominant here. Big scoop slam into the middle of the ring. Ooh. Volkov being pushed to the ground now as Vader just stamped to the back of his head. And now looking for... I thought he was going to go camel clutch there, but he didn't know. He just dropped his body weight onto the spine. As Vader now up on top. Big elbow attempt. Completely missed though. Vader now pushing Volkov down to the ground. And Volkov fighting back with a big boot in the gut. And now looking in for the sleeper hole. Yeah, Vader. I mean, there's loads of people that are so low though. I mean, Kevin Owens is really low. That's what I need to keep doing. I need to keep looking at people that are higher and people that are lower that I think that should be the way around. Put them up against each other and see what happens. I mean, that's the best way of doing it. You've got Buddy Matthews, Adam Cole, the Briscoes, Claudio, Booker T, Rey Mysterio, Diesel. All pretty low in the rankings. Of course, Diesel, unfortunately for him, was... Uh, was teamed up with Shawn Michaels, who was at a perpetual losing streak until recently. Three. Referee's now up to a four count. Big elbow drop now as well. And Volkov hitting well. Volkov looking for the elbow, but uh, Vader, he's suffering, Vader, bless him. Volkov up on top. If Volkov wins this, it's going to completely ruin it for me, because hey, we've had a few of these so far, haven't we? Like, when I put scripts up against um, Rey Mysterio and scripts got the win, or when I put Nathan Fraser up against Shawn Michaels and Fraser got the win, there's a lot of people that just don't seem to have gone the way that I expected them to. Vader with a two here, though. Well, someone in the crowd is a bit out there. Though. Vader now utilizing his power, throwing Volkov away from the corner. And now dropping his body weight across the chest. And look at how Volkov just ran straight into the shoulder block there by Vader. And now Vader taking him up into a Vader bomb. And that's got to be game set match here. And it is. And Vader picks up the victory over Nikolai Volkov. Vader moves up to a minus three. And Nikolai Volkov moves down to a plus ten. It's been a very good place for Nikolai. But it means that Vader can slowly start to make himself a bit more useful. And like I said, we just need to be putting these people against each other, don't we, really? The cream will always eventually rise to the top. And here we go then. As suggested by Mega last week, the Blade Runners needed to make up the numbers. They needed to even the numbers out. And today, they have done that. They've dug into their past, their history. And they have managed to persuade Dirty Dutch Mantel to join their cause. Today as a wrestler, but the Elimination Chamber as a manager. Let's get into the match. Let's see how Dirty Dutch can get on in what I believe is his first match in FWE. I might be completely wrong. I am. Dirty Dutch Mantel has had a match in the past. He got zero points for it, so I'm assuming it must have been some sort of elimination match where he got an elimination and was he part of a rumble maybe? So Dirty Dutch does have a chance here to show what he can do. And he started off pretty strongly. Of course, Kane is very low in the rankings. He still needs wins. He still needs points. And uh, 
obviously bringing the Undertaker in and Paul Bearer to help him try and get those points against the Blade Runners. I've never done a tag team feud. Maybe that's something I should do. As Dutch, when did Dutch start doing dives? Is that normal? Uh, we'll have to see if that's normal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll try a tag team feud next month. Actually, we've not done one before, so ever on this game or on any WWE game because they don't generally work very well. Before, but we'll try an actual proper tag team feud. I don't know who would do it against. Maybe. Oh, I've got an idea. Uh, no, because it's going to be tied up with someone else, isn't it? Okay. I'll think of someone. As Dirty Dutch now up on the top. Kane is on one knee. Kane needs to get back up and get in the ring. Dirty Dutch with a dive. Double axe handle. And the referee's count restarts. Kane is back up on his feet. And Dirty Dutch has had a very strong start so far. And again, taking Kane off the apron. Dutch is aware he's not had a lot of opportunities in the past. And he has decided that he wants to uh, take every opportunity he's given here against the struggling Kane, who's still very low in the rankings. This moveset for Dutch Mantel is not right, is it? This moveset is nowhere near correct. Oh my Who gave Dutch Mantel this freaking moveset? Okay, I apologise if we're breaking uh, the realism here, but Dirty Dutch Mantel doing a lion salt is not what I expected to see in this episode. But we'll see how it goes, I suppose. And Dutch Mantel now, what he was looking for there, but Kane saw it coming for him over his shoulders. Kane with a big chop right into the chin and now bringing Dutch back up. And Kane now with a sidewalk slam. Uh, Omega, if you're out there, which I'm hoping you are, what would you suggest uh, if I was just to give Dutch somebody's moveset from real life? Who would be the closest to him as he gets caught on a tombstone? Like somebody on the game I could just copy and paste over and then give me his correct finishes. I don't know much about Dutch in the ring, I must admit. It's Kane, only a two count from the Tombstone Power Driver. Now raining down the punches into the face of Dutch. Both guys drop into the outside. Kane now going to rain down the strikes into the face. Referee's at a free count. Lovely flatliner on the outside by Dutch Mantella. Still more moves that I wouldn't expect him to be using. I expect very old school move sets as well. The Undertaker now up on the apron. I realised that Kane was in control and dropped back down. Dirty Dutch now big boot into the gut. And a knee into the face as well. As Dutch Bantel again trying for that power bomb or power driver some of them sort of lines, but Kane saw it coming through him over the top. And now Kane back in control again, sending Dutch face first into that top turnbuckle. I think busted him open in the process. Big boot right to the side of the ankle. Roll through by Kane, and then a big stomp right into the face. And now Kane is stalking, ready to go. Has Dirty Dutch throttled up into the choke slam. The choke slam straight to hell is enough for the one, the two, and the three. And Kane picks up a win. Wow, very rare they happen. Dirty Dutch moves down to a minus one in our ranking system. Whereas the big red machine, Kane, with a victory, moves up to a minus seven. Puts him back to zero for the year.
And of course we move in to our Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Kane and The Undertaker up against the Blade Runners. With of course Paul Bearer and Dirty Dutch Mantel at ringside. I'm going to love you and leave you. Good night. God bless. I'll be the same. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you very soon for our next episode of Nitro. Bye-bye.